Welcome back, everyone. Part two. Part two. Uh, we just did Wheel of Time. A couple small penis jokes. It's worth a watch. If, uh, if you haven't read the series, we recommend it. Uh, this will be a little bit of a potpourri. Uh, we might do some sexy time with Sam. Uh, Heath brought up cuddling. And, I, and that actually plays into something that I wanted to talk about. Uh, but first things first, we were together last time we recorded. And we actually got a dislike on that video, which is yes. fun. It's awesome. No, it, it is awesome, except that, uh, as usual, I would say, if you hit the dislike, leave a comment. Because there's so many things you could dislike us for that we would like to know what. Especially when we're rambling for an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, well, but there's production quality, which you you could possibly have good advice for us. You're right. Uh, there's topics. There's opinions. So there's so many things that could be a dislike for that we don't know what if you just hit dislike. If it's production quality, well, we can always improve there. In fact, we're always looking for advice. If the if it's uh, if it's topics, well, I mean, give us something to talk about. We'll we'll talk about it. If it's our opinion, well, if you disagree with our opinion, tell us why. Because I have a structure for how I change and and, and alter my opinions, but it can be altered. It really can. And so, so, so leave your opinion and why you disliked us. So we can, we can actually grow as human beings as well, or we can just debate. I actually have uh, an example for that, that I thought about while I was working out today, because it's a horizontal push pull day. Uh, and I, I had this, this thought, cause you'd mentioned you wanted to talk some fitness stuff and uh, a, a quick, a quick point that, that we could talk about is one of the places where you've changed your mind is way back when you first started, when you were still working at velocity and you talked to me about this, about only needing to only going down to 90 degrees for a mm -hmm. bench press, that that's all you need. And that is a, a train of thought that is pretty prevalent through the lifting community of well, all you need is 90. And there, there are people who coach that because it's true to a certain degree, but there are other things that are also true, mm -hmm. which cause you to change your mind on that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's, let's go ahead and stay on that train of thought. Yeah, I don't think it's too much of a tangent. I think I said what I needed, needed to say about leaving a dislike. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we're going to go ahead and get the first topic, 90 degrees on bench press. Uh, but I'll also say for squats as well. Mm -hmm. So, so when we talk about range of motion in general, yeah. Uh, oh God, I can't remember his name. I, I, I this went a different direction than I even completely fathomed. So, uh, but there, there's a famous fitness personality that he's real big in the CrossFit circles. Uh, he does a lot of uh, functional training stuff. And he talks a lot about squatting below parallel because it's not adaptive to nature because there's nothing in nature we, we do that is below parallel except for maybe a jump or whatever. And this is where I would beg to differ because we don't squat below parallel because it's a normal everyday action. We squat below parallel because it's the maximum range of motion for the muscles we're trying to enhance, right? And, uh, and so if I do a parallel or below squat, it's because I'm taking that muscle through its full stretch reflex. And I'm trying to build that to its ma maximum capacity. So, so yes, if I have a, a baseball player that I'm trying to get ready for the season, maybe I'll do Anderson squats at, you know, 50 degrees or something. Anderson squat being it's on a peg and you pop it up with no negative uh, to it. But at the same time, if I'm trying to build muscle, I'm going to take that thing through the full range of motion because that's going to optimally uh, stimulate every bit of tissue I can. Mm -hmm. Right. 
but also when we think of injury prevention, if you're if you're not going beyond your comfortable range of motion and you're forced into that range of motion, then you're going to be injured. That's a good that's a good point because I was gonna bring up if you go back and watch our squat video, you were coaching me to parallel. Well, yes, you know, no more than parallel and up because I, my squat form was bad. So I it, I would love to go ass to grass, but I shouldn't be doing that if I'm going to hurt myself. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that was the same thing when, when you changed your mind on on bench press to 90 degrees. And that was your thinking is, OK, well, yeah, but the bench press motion is more than just the pec major. And these other things, this connective tissue and these other muscles, you you need to use those. Mm -hmm. You do use those. And so you want to move that full range of motion. Now, you don't want to drop 225 on your nipples if that's going to tear your pec. So <laughs> the... the exactly. It was 255. It was 255. But... So the, the build up to that that you recommended was chains. Mm-hmm. Because chains or, or bands, yeah, yeah, progressive yeah, re resistance. Chain, yeah. Chains or bands because you're going to have less resistance down here and more as you go up, as the band stretches or as the the chain pulls up, so that you can work that full range of motion without putting undue risk on the tissues that are being stressed. Which is actually something I'm, I have to evaluate with myself because. Uh, I'm going to get a professional opinion here soon because I'm going to see if Dr. Dinky, uh, if anybody's in my area, Dr. Dinky is the best chiropractic in the area, uh, as, as well as Dr. Redding. Dr. Dinky takes insurance, though. Redding does not. Uh, so those are the two best chiropractics. But uh, that aside, I need, I need to get his, uh, his opinion because it's not mine and I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to your own opinion about your body. Mm -hmm. But what I seem to have come to the conclusion with myself is I can do dips with weight now. And I can do dips in, in the proper form where you're getting a huge chest contraction and no problems. But if I do a bench press with even 50% of what I could do before, it hurts. And so my conclusion from that is it's the external rotation. It's the stretch. And that kind of makes sense because the, oh, what is this? Watch band. Okay. So this, this was the original tendon, right? Well, it ripped in half. And so this might be the tendon. Now it's shorter. And I think it's actually the stretch of the muscle and tendon now versus the, the force being produced. So that's what I'm going to go have evaluated. But at the same time, I can't do bench to chest and then back up with a huge amount of weight. Uh, so I might have to go back to parallel. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. I want to get to full, to full range of motion, but at the same time it, it, it's, yeah, it, it's different stresses at different positions and it's yeah, bro. I can bench 300 pounds. I could bench 300 pounds with the parallel standard before I was even strong, mm -hmm. but chest to chest to, to, to nipples, it was like 250 and then it was 275 and then it was 285 and then I popped my titty, but it was, <laughs> uh, where were we going with this? I don't know. I don't know. You started the fitness talk. I just threw something out there. I didn't know if you had other things to talk about, but that was my, uh, that, that was my, uh, inspiration. No, well, well, so, so it depends on goal, right? Uh, the goal is to build muscle, right? So I'm going to take that muscle through the complete range of motion and then bring it back all the way out. So I want to build the tendon. I want to build the muscle. I want to build the movement. Uh, if I'm thinking injury prevention, you want to work past your working range of motion because sometimes you're pushed past it. Uh, a great example, of, we, we did football talks before. So if I'm squatting to parallel every time and I get on the football field 
and I'm a running back and I hit the, I, I, I make my cut and a 330 pound defensive lineman jumps on top of me and pushes me down below parallel. If I don't ever train below bear parallel, I am very vulnerable in that position to an injury of some, some form, whether it's a torn ACL or a ripped hamstring or something along those lines, because I'm in a place I've never been, or I don't go very often. So that's why we train in those positions. No, it's not a, an optimal position. It's not, it's not where I want to be, but we train in places we don't want to be. So we don't ever get hurt because life takes you in places you don't want to be. <laughs> and the, it, back to our SEL conversation, this is the problem with SEL. We have to take these kids to where they don't want to be instead of just mm -hmm. preaching sunshine and happiness. We just uh, the same thing in the gym. We have to go beyond where we want to be instead of where, where it feels good. You know, you, you do reps with you quarter rep to failure. That feels actually pretty good. It sounds like it's bad, but it feels pretty good because you get that pump. You get, you get what Arnold talks about where it's, he, he talks about maybe not to the extent he talks about it, where he talks about <laughs> it, it's like an orgasm, but <laughs> it does feel good. If you yeah. just take if you just take a, a regular weight and, and half rep it till you can't do it anymore, you're like, oh, I feel jacked. I'm good. That's but if you take like it, to finish with holy triceps, fat man. Yeah. So, if, but if you take it through a full range of motion with the proper load, it sucks from rep one. Mm -hmm. It's and if you're doing twenty reps, sucking from rep one sucks a long time. So, mm -hmm. but. The, to your point, there's a reason you do that. We we talked about that way back when you were talking about functional training and what that should really mean is, okay, functional training doesn't mean you have somebody drop their keys and bend down and pick them up 20 times. No, the reason you coach even a geriatric client into doing a deadlift is so that when they have to bend over and pick something up, they've done something worse. They've done something more stressful mm -hmm. already. I'm... I'm annoyed that it, uh, it's way more well, uncomfortable. It's, it, to do it, it's not just mental. It's, it's your body because yes, your body does have, I mean, we can personify it with thought, but it, it, it has a sort of memory to, to a degree where it adapts to what's stressful. Right. And if you do something in your daily life and it's stressful, you're more likely to get hurt. But if you do something in training that stresses it, that's beyond your daily life, then you do that what would have been stressful. It doesn't It doesn't affect you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So go back to your thoughts. Sorry. Well, that that builds on it because it's in a controlled environment. That's mm -hmm. that's how you are able to overstress yourself. Thank, thanks so for finishing that thought. That was actually the perfect cap to what so, I was saying. Yeah. I hate, I, I used to do Bulgarians a lot and then my hips got tighter and my balance started to go and I don't do them as much, but I have to force myself to do them. You know, wh why would I do that? Well, because when I'm walking down your stairs over there and a freaking 120 pound boneheaded dog runs into my leg, trying to race me down the stairs, I need to be able to catch myself so I don't go tumbling down, which happened has happened on more than one occasion with my dogs. Uh more than one occasion every 10 minutes if yes. you're going up and down the stairs yeah uh but re yeah that that's the thing i can't keep you alive longer other than obesity related diseases but mm -hmm. uh it's quality of life yeah and the the reality is the number one cause of a nursing home stay is not illness unless you call sarcopenia an illness uh, it's the ability to stand up without help. Uh, the, the fact that standing up is someone squat one rep max is why you're in a nursing home. It's not because you had cancer. It's not because you have heart disease. It's not because of all these things. It's because you can't move and you need help to get around with daily tasks. So I can help with that. We, you can help with that. We can help with that. We all can help ourselves with that. Uh, 
obesity related disease aside, we can't make you live longer, but we can make you live better. And that that's the mentality we need to have. How am I living? And frankly, sometimes I do things around the house where I strain a little bit and I'm like, God dog it. How do weak people do this? I remember getting a carpet down from a rafter in a garage. This was not this house, but another house. And I was on a ladder and I went back and I pulled it back up and it was everything I could do to hold this thing. And then I was like, wow, if I was 5% less strong, I'd be, I'd have fallen down and broken my back right there. It's just, I don't know. It, 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 do it for yourself. All right. That's all I got on that. Do you have any more fitness things that you want to talk about? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rotational strengths. Mm. Okay. So I was working with some baseball players and uh, uh, I, I do some exercises to help with the hip rotation. And uh, this is a little physics thing uh, that I kind of wanted to put into. It, it was just a thought that I was putting into a visual. So uh, for everybody that's in the audience that watches ice skating, this is, a, this is a good example of this. So you watch the ice skater and they start spinning and they push the ice, push the ice, push the ice, push the ice and start spinning. And they put their foot out and they spin at a certain rotation, right? And then they pull their foot in and as they pull their foot in, they speed up, right? So, so this is a little physics trick because they generate the force with their foot out and so say their leg is two feet long and uh we'll we'll cut off pi at 3.14 uh two pi r is the circumference so two feet out 6.28 feet and we'll say the rotation is a second all right so 6.28 feet per second they're going and they pull their foot in well they pull their foot in and it's not two feet out anymore right it's one foot maybe a half a foot out so we'll say one foot is 3.14 and so the the force they generated is already generated and they're on a frictionless surface so they pull it in and because there's no negligible friction they speed up because the force is already there. Force is constant. And so you inverse that when you have friction. And so when I'm working with my baseball players, what we do is we turn, we, we work on the, 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 the small rotation of the hip. And so the small rotation of the hip translates to greater speed on the ball releasing from the hand because their feet are planted it's the, it's the inverse. So the speed of the hip is the same as the velocity of the hand at a greater uh, distance from the body. So, so that increases the speed. And I thought that was just a really cool concept that these kids are trying to, I'm trying to gra uh, grasp with these kids because I'm trying to get the hip rotation uh, going without the power leak in the core. Oh, you're the baseball guy. I figured you'd have a lot of thoughts on that. I'm looking for something. Can I find a good uh, video on this? Uh, right. Make sure I can share. Okay. Right. Hold on. Okay. I didn't know you had some. All right. Here we go. Okay. I got to I gotta mute this because Collinsworth is talking and nobody mm. wants to hear that. I can't stand Collinsworth. All right. Share, share, share. Okay. This is, so people were kind of laughing at it when he first started doing this, but this is Dak Prescott's uh, hip warm up routine that he does pre game. It's really uh, hiccupy. Every time. Okay. And that was actually a good uh, play to play there, or a good throw uh, play there. So it's, that actually, this, this clip works even better than I thought because. It's, play, it's play it again. It hiccuped a lot. Okay. 
Let's see if we get a better. Okay, that's a little better. Yeah. So his hip warm up, popping those hips, you know, kind of over exaggerating, popping those hips um, to get him warmed up and woke up. And now look at this throw. He does not have his feet set. He's completely off balance, but he's able to pop the hip and make a good throw. And so, like I said, when he first started doing that, people kind of laughing because it looks kind of silly. But when he, st- I don't remember the name of the the coach he got with when he started doing that in the off season. And and when he came, it should have been this guy. It should have been that what, guy. What year was that? There's a couple. Th- I think that was from last season. But a couple of years ago is when he first started doing that. When he when he came back from an off season and people noticed this this warm up routine and they were kind of laughing at it, but he was much more accurate and had more velocity on his throws. So I'm going to, I'm going to take credit for this <laughs> just indirectly because uh, uh, I, I don't, did I mention this in the show before? Did I even talk to you about it? What? I played da- Dak Prescott in cornhole one time. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, so me and my boy, Jared, he, he pitched for the Astros Padres Marlins for a while. We, we were out at a bar and, Prescott shows up with his entourage and we were playing cornhole and there was apparently a tournament going on. So we, we just jumped in and uh, we, we beat the shit out of him. by the way. Yeah. Uh, Prescott was actually pretty good, but his, his, his lineman that was with them. I don't know who it was. It wasn't any of the ones I recognized. He, he, he kind of sucked, but, uh, but Jared's a, was a professional pitcher. So he's obviously got placement and uh, I've got pretty good hand-eye coordination, so I'm pretty good at cornhole too. So we kick we kick their asses. But uh, I, I'm going to say he he learned from my hip movement <laughs> that year because it, it would have been about the same time. It was about three years ago, four years ago, right before COVID. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that was about the time he started doing that. Was right before COVID. No, um, but but it's uh, when your feet are so so friction on the floor. When your feet are planted, if I can. <laughs> So that that little movement here will translate to the same speed coming out here. Now, the difference between ice skating and that is there's no friction in ice skating. So that you actually speed up and slow down depending on how far the uh, the distance of the most distal part of your body is. But when you go to dry land, because friction is constant, unless you have a weakness on the chain going up to the external force, the speed of the small movement is what's going to end up on the other end. And so if I can make a a quick hip switch, which is the strongest muscles in your body, your glutes and, 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 and glute medius, glute maximus, et cetera. If I can make a quick flip there, then I can have an even quicker flip with a long lever arm in my Mm -hmm. hand. And so that's how you throw hundred miles an hour. It's not the fact that you just have a really strong chest and arm. It's the fact that you can create angular velocity. Uh, maybe we should look at old uh, Nolan Ryan pitches or something. You know, it, or, or a, a better one would be a big unit. What's his name? Johnson. Randy Johnson. Oh, Randy man. Johnson. Yeah, because yeah, he had he would flip his hips, but he also had like a seven foot wingspan, and so. He would flip his hips and that would translate out his, his, you know, four foot arm onto the, uh, to the ball. And that thing would just fly out of there with no effort. Yeah. Here's a, here's a perfect video of, of Randy Johnson to illustrate. Is this the one where he blows up the bird? (laughs) (laughs) can't stop laughing at that and, uh, i've heard i've heard him say he felt so bad about that it was like oh it was like horrific <laughs> like well, look, at feel- look at his hip look at his hip so so it goes and, flat to us right it goes flat to us before the delivery yeah that the hip is pulling the arm yeah uh eric cressy would say the belly button leads the shoulder and so the belly button would go forward and then the shoulder would follow But because we're strong along this, there's no leak of power. And so, so it's, it, it, it's the hip flip, but it's it's also the core strength. Mm -hmm. So it's those two things combined. Uh, And then you add, 
you know, a couple degrees of external rotation of the shoulder and everything like that. But the hips, hips, uh, you know, we go back to BJ Penn. If you're a fighter, if you control the hips and the head, you won the fight. Uh, and uh, when we when we we talk about health, so uh, we've gotten comments on squat form and and things like that. Your hips are the number one determining factor whether you're going to have knee or back pain when you exercise. So think of the hips, people. We'll, we'll, we'll go into it in, gen, in, in, in more detail in other episodes, but really think of your hips. If you've got hip issues and if you drive a lot, which causes hip issues, then we need to go deeper into this. Mm-hmm. That was that was what I want to talk about fitness. All right, I had something that was gonna hurt my brain. What was that? Oh, you talk about women and cuddling. Yeah, but you had something else that you were gonna ambush me with. <laughs> okay, so well, I, it's not an ambush. I sent you a text when I was reading it. Oh, I don't remember which one. <laughs> okay, so I'm reading. Uh, oh, the men- okay, yeah, and the chapter that I was in is actually affectionately titled. The gays, gay. <laughs> and for those that don't know the author, it's it's Douglas Murray, who's a gay man. So don't come after me, LGBTQ community. Even though you've rejected the gays lately, but uh-huh. uh, Heath brought up in our Wheel of Time episode women and cuddling, uh. and how it's evil, and <laughs> it actually <laughs> it actually plays into what i was thinking because one of the issues we talk about is why does this perpetuate even though it's very evolutionarily a a negative kind of trait right but we also see it in and so i wanted to go two directions with this why does it perpetuate and two why is it a big issue now yeah and i think we i think when this came up uh, several weeks back, I think it was because of the the Peterson and Ruben interview, right? That that podcast, like, because I I believe they talked about it there, because right? I remember us talking about it, and I think it was because of that. Yeah, and so if you're on the religious right, it's just evil and it's bad, right? And, and which which makes evolutionary sense because some of the things we think morally have some backing because it doesn't make children. And so if you're of the crowd that all sex is for procreation, then obviously gay is evil, right? Because you can't procreate with gay. Well, not some might think of evil, not evil. It's sin, which there's a difference. Evil and sin are to me are synonymous. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we might get onto that. You you got to do Sunday school with Heath at some point. Okay. All and right. Get on get on your horse and, and do this and we can have that talk. But uh it doesn't create children so when we talk about why we have sexual urges there are so many biological markers that go along with that that are that that make 100 complete sense right you know i i get stupid when i see someone i'm attracted to and in for those that don't know the biology behind it actually pick up the trace pheromones in the air and all of that as well to say ah i want to make a baby with this person that makes complete sense because you're 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 trying to perpetuate your genetics you're trying to perpetuate the human race you're trying to make babies uh in in that sense uh which it which from a logic standpoint just it, it's right there. there there's nothing there's no speculation about that but when we talk about gay well you can't do any of that right you're just seeking pleasure and so why and you brought up women cuddling is evil (laughs) and this actually played into the thought i had when i sent you that text well now i'm curious how that connects yeah so women cuddling is 
they want emotional connection, uh-huh. but they don't quite want sex. So what's the difference between one of the differences between gay and heterosexual relationships? A match in libido. The gays get together because they're horny. And yeah, they still cuddle, but they also have the sex. Yeah. Whereas when you're talking male female relationships, sometimes the girl just wants to cuddle. And that's not exactly how I was going to explain it, but you set me up for it. Uh, Jimmy Carr has a funny bit. He's one of my favorite standups um, because he's so quick. And uh, one of the reasons I like his standup specials is because he's the only comedian I know who has audience interaction uh, because he loves to burn down hecklers and it's hilarious, but then he'll also ask questions and he'll riff off of their responses. And, and one of, one of the bits he did in this special he's got on YouTube uh, was asking people to shout out, what are some excuses you've heard for not having sex? And he kind of starts this routine and then he, he kind of pauses and is like, now uh, w- women don't think I'm ignoring you. Uh, if, if I'm not asking for excuses men have given you because there aren't any. <laughs> if you ask your man, Hey, you want to, he'll say, yes. Mm-hmm. Want to go upstairs and yes. Hey, the kids are asleep. We should. Yes. <laughs> That's the answer. And, and so where, where I was going with the cuddling um, wasn't even, I was curious where, how you tied it in, but uh I don't even remember what got me on this train of thought, but oh, it and and I I mentioned it uh, when we were talking about Wheel of Time, talking about the not just the differences between men and women, but that we don't understand not just what the other side is thinking, but how they think. You know, we don't have to go through that. We don't experience that. We don't have the same frame of reference. So when your lady just wants to cuddle, now if you're in a relationship, you're going to do that because you want to take care of your lady. However, lady, you need to understand what that does to the guy. because And don't complain about the boner. Exactly. <laughs> because you've never had to experience having to hide a boner in the middle of class because you accidentally saw a centimeter of Natalie's cleavage. <laughs> Oh, Natalie, God, she still looks would, good. I knew she that would get you. Still looks good, but I, that's... I, you know, if if for some reason her husband watches this, I I apologize, but you're, yeah, I had a crush on her since I was like six years old. So, <laughs> I think a lot of people did, but the and the point is, uh, that wasn't the first or the last one. Like, okay, I gotta hide this one. All right, it finally went down. There's going to be another one in the next class. <laughs> there's there's going to be another one later. There was another one before that. That That's how the, to, to your point about how gays get together and why it's so physical, because you have a match in libido, because they both have the same, not the, not just the same kind of hormones, but the same reaction to stimulus. Mm-hmm. That is, oh, I got to go now. Well, and, and so so a lot of people in the religious community try to put a an evil type uh, narrative on why skin contact or sexually transmitted diseases spread fo- so fast in the gay community. And we got this with monkeypox here recently, mm-hmm. and which is one of the beefs I have with a lot of the people you follow right now, because... They really jumped on this to to hit their base. Uh, it's if you have matching libidos with the, the the preference you have, you're going to have a lot 
more sex, which means you increase the contact time. If you find a girl that has a high libido, the nymphomaniac kind of girl, you're going to increase your chance of contracting something. It's numbers. It's not sin. And that's... Well... Well, yeah, okay. So you, so you think the sin is tied to the numbers. But no, no there, yeah. there, there is a reason certain sexually transmitted diseases... I don't want to go into the uh, graphic details because I don't remember them because I looked at this a long time ago. There are transmission rates based on the kind of contact you have for HIV. And the reason anal sex is astronomically higher than all the others because of f fissures, anal yeah. fissures. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm going to speak anecdotally a little bit of all the women that I've had intercourse with 50% wanted anal sex. It, it's certainly got to be a lot higher in younger generations than than older. Uh, for, is what I'm I trying to guess. think across age lines. Now, now you're making me pick my brain of who was who, but <laughs> yeah, but it, there, and, and that's where we kind of we kind of touched on this with the uh, with the Peterson and Rubin conversation is why it was so good is because it was so frank about these kinds of things and. And Ruben was open and honest to uh, his own challenges that he was going to face as uh, as a homosexual parent, as as a family with two males, uh, uh, you know, raising the children. OK, well, the same thing is going to come up in the uh, in the carnal side of the relationship. It's going to change things. There are going to be trade-offs. There's going to be challenges. There are going to be things that you need to be aware of or else. And we're not allowed to talk about that because you're being homophobic. No, I'm stating a fact. that. Well, realistically, we're just not allowed to talk about sex in general. Even when we talk about it in a heterosexual stance, we're talking about married couples. Typically. No, I, I I completely disagree. We are a we are a wholly oversexed and pornographic society at this point. Yeah, but not, it, but not you, publicly. You are oh no you're no no. A, there is some meat. There is a lot of media that is that is following that. But as but far no, as your general conversation, it's not just the media. And now, conversation might be a little bit different simply because it's a private personal act and maybe people don't want to talk about it in the same way that George Cardinalin has this hilarious bit about how he he hates it when people announce they're going to take a dump. I don't need to know about that. Um so there might be something to that, but sexualization in general, just go to a box gym, man, and try and, and go back to our conversation about trying to hide your boner. <laughs> in gym shorts. And it's 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 not just the fit women; it's all of them, pretty much. But I I think we're not allowed to talk about the consequences of sex because that's judgmental. No, I. This you can is talk where... about the sex act all you want. You can talk about the sex act in a high school, and if I talked about the sex act to a high schooler, I would be put on a list but you know if you're a teacher you can do it oh okay so you're going down that road i was i was thinking i was going to stay on the 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 adult road not the groomer road well no i yeah, I, I, yeah. I i think it's hand in hand i think it's part of the same mentality okay so so you're correct with the the groomer movement but to get back on the other side of it i have a feel it, it just feels like we actually talk about more of the result than we do the act itself. We just do the act with no abandon, but we don't talk about the act. We talk about the results. Uh, Which is why, I mean, that, that actually makes that, 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 that puts forward the Roe v. Wade stuff.
because that's all about the result. See, I I disagree in part because I don't know what you mean by result, because I feel like the talk about the result is, hey, be careful, don't get an STD or get someone pregnant. Yeah, that's that's the talk about the result. But see, th that that was my point is we don't talk about the consequences of sex outside of that. I feel like that's all we talk about. You don't talk about the sex act all the time. It's it's a mainstay of comedy. It's a I mean, for crying out loud, one of the things that got us on this this <laughs> this train is you talking about making small penis jokes. You said to train be self, <laughs> to be self deprecating. And all right, so well, how much of this do I want to talk about? Okay, so I get annoyed when people. That's, sorry, uh, can I get us banned? Okay, yes, please. Uh, it, it's on the subject of train, but uh, one of the things in the Kavanaugh hearings was they ran a train apparently, mm -hmm. and uh, with no evidence whatsoever. But sure. But that doesn't even matter to me because I know I'm trying to think on top of my head at least seven, eight women that have requested that from people. Okay. And I'm like, well, maybe they did. But maybe she... I, I'm not, I'm not going to even choose my words carefully. Asked for this service from these people. And I'm like, so? You like it, to get freaky. If it happened, was everybody willing? That's all I care about. And if you say, if, if you say that that's bad, you're not a progressive. You're a conservative. Oh my <laughs> Oh, you've gotten me off track about <laughs> if if a woman says you two come with me if you disagree with that you are not a progressive you are a conservative and if a guy says dude girl come with me and they acquiesce to it willingly and you disagree with that, you are not a progressive. You are a conservative because you think everything should be a certain way. I'd forgotten I was going to bring this up. And now you've just broken my brain and made me mad. Have you watched the Manti Teo documentary? The who? What? Manti Teo. I have not. I have a, I have a couple clients who have, and they said it's worth watching. I could not. I wasn't going to watch it and a bunch of people were talking about it and I saw clips and then I tried to watch it. And I got through as much as I could and it pissed me off. Dude, I did Colin Kaepernick. I can't do Manti Teo in the same year. <laughs> <laughs> I had completely forgotten about this. Mm -hmm. um, I I wasn't, I hate this kind of soap opera type stuff anyway. Um, so I wasn't really paying attention. I just kind of remembered you know, hearing about the mom dying and the girlfriend dying and then the girlfriend wasn't real. But I hadn't seen all of the, you know, the 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 media, not social media, but the media clips that you that you if you watch from back then. And it's despicable that to your point, what made me think of this is the you're not a progressive. These leftist progressive supposedly uh holier than thou uh woke people pressing and being accusatory and hostile talking about how this was all a a cover because he's a closeted homosexual what the hell business of it is your is it of yours if he is gay and what would it matter mm -hmm. you're you're over here on the one hand pushing the gay agenda constantly politically but then you have someone who maybe you think could be a closeted homosexual and you're going to salaciously push that in a kind of derogatory and accusatory way this is why Who i speak you? open and honest and i have no 
political party because I never have to contradict myself. It, this poor guy, I had, I remember, I vaguely remember it happening at the time. And then I vaguely remember a few years later thinking, hey, whatever happened to that guy? Because you and we love defense. We love good defensive play. And he was a phenomenal linebacker. And I think the last time a, a, a defensive player won the Heisman was Woodson. Yeah. Yeah. Darren and, Woodson. And he, but he also, he played offense and special teams as well. Yeah. So Manti Teo being on the cusp of winning the Heisman as a linebacker was just huge. And then, then he disappeared because he, he went from a lock to a top five, top 10 pick to falling into the second round because of this, because this just ruined his life and destroyed his senior year. You know, he, he lost four or $5 million because of this. And the way this documentary treats this vile, reprehensible piece of human excrement that did this to him is infuriating because this guy now lives as a woman. And they put this disclaimer up about how all of these interviews were filmed before, uh, before it was known that I forget this person's name, uh, lives as a woman now. So? You don't get any respect for me because of what you did? Why are you treating this person with kid gloves when they ruined this man's life? But that's the perspective, is, oh, oh, this this special snowflake unicorn rainbow trans person, we have to handle you with kid gloves, but you were going to smear and be derogatory and accusatory about your being a closeted homosexual, it makes no sense except that you're all bad people and I hate you. I want to, I want to think about a little bit deeply where I want to go with this because there is bad wrong on both sides of the political spectrum that would have made this right. There is the fact that we should be non-caring about whether Mantiteo was homosexual or not with his draft status because he's a fucking good football player. Right? His, junior, his, his junior year was phenomenal. And then there's the fact that uh, this person is being celebrated because they're trans now. And they shouldn't be because they ruined a really good football player's life based on it. And again, I haven't watched the series, so I have to I have to go through. I, you know, I might watch it now that you brought this up because it seems at least equally as important as watching the Kaepernick stuff. So I can go through annoying to 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 get the whole story. It, but it, it you're 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 a better person and a more optimistic person than me. So you might find it somewhat uplifting because he is a phenomenal human being, not just a football player. The, the way he handled the way Manti Teo handles himself, which is funny is, because you're, you're wrong in that I'm a better person because the way the news cycle was going out about him, I actually had a negative view of him in that draft where I was like, oh, he's doing this because where now I need to, this is, this might be, uh, I might watch the whole series because there, there are facts that I was lacking mm -hmm. in my opinion. And I may change my stance on a person uh, based on the, uh, I have, I've already changed my stance on a person based on this conversation in these moments that we talk right now. So, uh, it's don't, don't call me a better person. Just, I, uh, at least if I die, call me a, a, a deep thinking person where I try to at least, uh, evaluate everything with the I'm information your, I have. I'm going to put your deep thoughts on your tombstone. Hey, uh, I'm fine <laughs> with that. Deep thoughts by Jack Handy. <laughs> which is the best you've, you've ever. 
Uh, all right, that's all I got on that. I don't, I don't want to rant about that anymore. That, that, that derailed me and made me upset. Did we have a, a an original point that, that derailed us from? Yeah, I was going somewhere, but I can go there later. We have, next time we talk more sexy time. No, no, quick. Throw us in so I can at least tease it. The idea that even in red states that they don't teach sex ed is nonsense. And I know because my mom taught it for a while when she get back, got back into teaching. Oh, we did it. You were still here, I think. And it, 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 it infuriates me when, when, cause this has come up often when I talk to lefty friends about abortion is, well, you know, red States, people in Oklahoma or whatever, they, all they get taught is abstinence. No, they don't, you know, you, you literally don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So let, let me get us banned then. Cause I'm going to take us to our, uh, yes. our final uh, analysis of the gays. And it's, and it's societal uh so we look at history and we look at what's going on today uh this again written by a gay man this the the patterns that i was coming across in this book was uh this is only a problem when times are good <laughs> So we look back at the at the Greeks and the Romans, and uh, I'm not as familiar with Eastern civilizations on this, but uh, it, it, the Mayans, the Aztecs, this thing, this phenomenon, which is uh, basically males stimulating other males' prostates, uh, is really a big deal every time things are at the peak so it's kind of a first world problem and to kind of narrow that down is when things are rough procreation is key you're thinking about spreading your genes but then we get to you know, say like Athens, Greece, women are for procreation, men are for fun, right? And I think we might be at that point in society here in the States because of what we talked about, the matching of libido, the stimulation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, to, I, that's a good point because to me, that just goes in hand in hand with our obesity problem. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's directly connected. Yeah, uh, yeah. The the you know wh whether whether it's the physical pleasure of that you know salt and fat and sugar that gives us that buzz, or that physical pleasure from sex that gives us that buzz. This is what we're focused on: is our personal physical pleasures, which you can only focus on when life is good. Yeah, because when life isn't good. Things that are pleasurable are survival oriented. So you, you said sugar, fat, and salt, right? Well, we're looking for that in nature if life isn't good. And it's few and far between. Whereas in today's life, I can go to HEB, which is maybe a mile, not even quite that, not to, quite, in, no. in that direction, you know? It's a mile if I take the roads there. If I was just to walk through people's houses, it would be less. But uh, it, it's, it's, it, these are struggles of abundance. And everybody talks about, uh, so, so Douglas Murray talks about, uh, I, I don't know in this book, but in his interviews, he, he says, uh, gender crisis always follows the or always precedes the fall of an empire hmm. and we saw this with greece we saw this with rome we saw this with uh, a lot of uh, civilizations and that i think is indicative of the fact that we can defy nature because we have it too good but nature always wins yeah 
And that's just the fact of life. Nature always wins because nature is constant. Nature doesn't change. You know, it gets a little warmer. It gets a little cooler. It gets, uh, gravity is the same no matter what. Right. And so this brick house that I, I live in will crumble at some point. And, uh, we might be there, but do we learn from it? That's, yeah. that's the question. Do we learn from it? If we don't, then how do we be the ones that survive? Those are the two big questions. Can we learn from it? Or if we don't, how do we survive? All right. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Learn, learn from it. That's, that's one of the things we try and sign off on is, Go learn, go make yourself better, go make yourself healthier physically and mentally. And, you know, that's, if you don't, this is what happens. If, if you, if you don't do it physically, then you hurt yourself trying to pick up your keys and you end up in a nursing home. If you don't do it mentally, then civilization literally collapses. The unfortunate part about the civilization part is it's not just you. So like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> because that gets our voice out to more people and uh we didn't give any did we give any advice i don't think so we just kind of ranted our opinions about well there's some fitness advice but you know yeah so if you got anything out of the fitness advice uh know that we're not your trainers we do not have a waiver which is the most important part but the other part is we do not know you and we have not evaluated you uh so take it with a grain of salt and don't actually eat the salt because that might raise your blood pressure unless you're deficient in salt then it might regulate your electrolytes this is why we don't give direct advice because it uh anything we say is just general you need to figure out the specifics for yourself yeah but at the same time for a reason we think we have something to say so please yep. please please like share subscribe and comment because we need the algorithm to go because if one percent of america agrees with us that's 3.3 million people right and we're at 52 subscribers so <laughs> <laughs> so get the word out uh gosh this this is actually a good one i like this one but All right. we've been thinking about it a while because we haven't gone on for a little bit. So yeah, I've been feeling crappy this week, but hopefully be getting better here in, in the next couple of weeks. Well, the, the doing stuff in the evening has made things tough uh, for me anyway, yeah. but I, I am picking up a few more clients this week. So hopefully I'm busy during hopefully. the day. Hopefully. All right. We'll see y'all next time then. Later. <laughs>